Jordan Peterson went on Bill Maher's podcast and they got on the topic of relationships, marriage. Why do you think you were so successful in terms of maintaining long-term friendships, but not successful in terms of maintaining long-term Because I don't see it as a success. And gosh darn it, this took a twist. I don't even think Bill Maher was expecting. To, to know that there's a guy in the world who is like that with someone he's been with for 30 years. And I think there's some stuff in here that's actually extremely valuable. One to people's paradigm who may not be uh, aligned with the idea of marriage and two to people within marriage and some practical knowledge and game that Jordan Peterson gives those of us that are married. We're going to jump into this conversation. I got to give you guys a heads up. Had your kids, had your wife. Explicit, explicit, explicit. All right, so this is from an hour and 28 minute mark. Check this out. Sacrifice, but like I'm... I'm what, maybe... really, what, ha what has sustained you? I mean, you talked about... So your... you're talking about not wanting to be married, not wanting to have kids. Uh, you know... Bill Maher is on his red pill vibes. He's on his fresh and fit in this. I just like girls. I like to, you know, I don't want to be committed. Really, marriage is hard. You get bored. I like variety. That's basically what he's saying. So Jordan Peterson kind of leans into this. I mean, you talked about your parents and you're grateful to, the, to that relationship. Yeah. Well, so my sister is still in the world and, and we're close and we talk on the phone and stuff. That's nice. Um, friends? <clears throat> the best. Oh, and, yeah, okay. and the greatest thing about being this age is that, you know, friends are something you collect over a lifetime. And I don't mean that in a cynical way. It's a good thing. Yeah, you know, right, right. I remember like at Cornell, Having no friends. Yeah. No friends. Yeah. Zero. How forget, old were you forget, when you went to Cornell? Like, like everybody, 18. Yeah, okay. okay. Like, and like, when was that? 74. Okay, okay. Okay, so like forget girlfriends. No girl, <laughs> girls, forget that was not going to happen at Cornell. But uh, not even friends. Hmm. I mean, that's lonely. Yeah, To go right. from that to like when you're this age and you have friends, who, like I have three friends from childhood, you know, a couple from college, and then friends from early stand-up who are still my friends. Friends from when I was like an actor in the 80s, you know, a couple of people like that. And then from the people on uh, Politically Incorrect. And then real-time over the last 30 years, friendships that just happened organically. I mean, I never push it on anybody. But a lot of those are long-term friendships. Long-term. So why do you think... So you don't have to answer It's this. wonderful it's to have so many wonderful friends. Why, why do you think you were so successful in terms of maintaining long-term friendships, but not successful in terms of maintaining long-term Because long -term I don't see it as a success. <laughs> Jordan Peterson's like, you got some long-term friendship. Why don't you ever make a, a, a romantic relationship work? That's a good question. And his, and his answer is, I don't think it's a success. You're, right, see, but, the you way, see, but you do I, see having I know, the, long, the, the friends as a... Just the way the question is phrased. Yeah, okay. You are not successful at keeping long-term relationships. Yeah, I, I, I threw the game, okay, Doc? <laughs> I didn't want to be successful. I took a dive in the third round. Yeah. Right, but, but, it's, but it's... He's making light of it, but Jordan Peterson's really doing a therapy session with this man. It's curious to me that you, but that isn't the case on the friendship front. But it's so different. Friendships, okay, what, you don't what? get tired of this. I, I still love hanging out with Jim Vallely, and we never, ever expect, <laughs> ever. Not once in 45 years. And it's, so there's just not that dimension to it that is always hanging over the head, like the sword of Damocles over relationships. The clock's always ticking on them for when the passion runs out. And that's the dilemma everybody finds themselves in. Everybody finds themselves in it. It's just how people handle it. Some people. Man. Watch, watch, watch what Jordan Peterson does, though. <sighs> watch where this goes. This is going to blow your mind. You guys ready? This is about to blow your mind. Because he's saying, you, you know, the, the sex isn't, a, isn't as good. You, you get bored of each other. Watch what happens. People cheat. Some people leave. Some people don't care. Some people just suck it up. <laughs> you know, everybody has their way of dealing with it. But it's going to happen. No one, I mean, and no one who's in a long-term relationship is going to say, oh, yeah, 20 years on, and we still, like, attack each other when we walk in the door. It's just, it, come on. That's, how, that's true in my case. You Let's look at, go. Look at the faces. Look Let's at look at, Ju look at Jordan Peterson's face. He's like, "What are you talking about?" That's true in my case. It's not nothing, right? And then he's watch watch the watch the response here. This is brilliant. Watch this. And we still like attack each other when we walk in the door. It's just it, come on. That's how, that's true in my case. You still attack each other? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. I know like, we just picture. played stump the band. <laughs> <laughs> this man said they just played stump the band. He got him. He got him. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. Sorry, man. You got me. Sorry. You win yeah, yeah. dinner at Peppy's. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Wow, that's very impressive. That's, it's, that's it's really, it's, okay. it's really, it's, better, well, you know. Better man than I. Let me tell you the story. So, one, Bill Maher is projecting his relationship inadequacies on all people in relationships. Oh, yeah. Just because you get bored doesn't mm, mean yeah, most people get yeah, bored. Yeah, yeah. I enjoy sex with my wife who I've been with for 19 years, married for 15 years, substantially more now than I did when we first got married. 
Yeah, I also feel like man, the, the uh, Bill Maher is it, he also is a reflection of the world that puts sex at the center of marriage and makes it everything. And so it's like, but what you know, what he doesn't say is how that's not at the center of his other relationships that he can keep. Right. Right. Yeah. So it's like right now, after fifteen years that you've been married, Ruslan, you know what I'm saying? There, there had been there, there were moments where the sex, you know, wasn't yeah. wasn't there. Yeah. Not every not every day is gonna be, you know, at a thousand. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. And that's that that's not the beauty of marriage. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But let me tell you, after fifteen years, you know, you get good at it. <laughs> get good at it. You find out what each other likes, right? Ooh -wee. Yep. Because it, 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 so both my wife and I were very sick for a couple of years. Right. And she just about died every day for about eight months. It was really not good. And she handled it with amazing grace, by the way. And at the same time, I was very ill and we were actually separated like for about two years because I was in hospitals here and there. Sure. And so I was there with her for the bulk of her illness. And then when she recovered very suddenly and somewhat miraculously uh, on our 30th wedding anniversary day, by the way, which she told me she was going to do like three months previously, which was like, I have no idea what to make of any of that. I got very ill after that. And so we were apart more or less for about two years and we grew apart quite a lot. And when we got back together, when I moved back into the house, it wasn't we didn't really know what to do with each other because it had been so long and she had kind of gone her way and I was still very ill. But we had made a habit of dating two or three times a week. Like we really set aside time to do that. Each other? And yes, yes, each other, yes. <laughs> like an, important, an important point, Bill. Yeah, yeah. And so, and so we had practiced that continually. Wow. And check, check, check. Listen to the language. He says, we made a point of dating. We practiced that. Mm. Mm. We practiced that. There was, a, there was a discipline to it. Yeah. It wasn't just when he felt like doing it. It wasn't yeah. just when the passion was when, when he was horny. Yeah. They practiced dating. Consistency, baby. And we really set aside time to do that. And so when we got back together and we didn't really know what to do, we thought, well, we, we have this dating routine. Like, maybe we can start that up again. And I tell you, man, that brought us back together right away. And it was better than it was before. And that has um, continued. When you say dating, yeah. like, describe a date. Like, it sounds like, a, like something where it's planned and... You know, you're you're at your best, and you're. Yep. All of that. This response, yo, is so is going to be the smoothest response ever. Watch this, watch this. This is going to be so good. Yeah, yeah that's what that. you got to do. Well, okay, I can tell you. Well, so we have this third. You go out to dinner. You. We we generally don't because I can't go out in public that much, you know. Because look at you. Yeah, well, you know, so. Hey, so, cannot go out in public. I love it. Well, not be private, right? So okay, you, so well, you, you. I'm sure you know hockey, exactly you what do that's like. That involves hockey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, if, if I wear a mask, if I wear a goalie mask, there you go. I can go so to hockey. Two problems yeah, at yeah, once. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. We have this third floor on our house. We, we built we built a log cabin essentially on the third floor of our house in Toronto. It's really? this little narrow house. Yes, we had this weird idea that we would build a log cabin on the roof of our house, huh. which we eventually did. On although the roof. Yes, we, we tore off the roof and we put a third floor on that's basically a log cabin. Holy except crown. we had an Indian guy, Native American, Native Canadian actually, come and help us design it. And it's full of totem poles and beautiful really? Native art. Yeah, it's a crazy place. It's all wood. Um, it wood? has great acoustics. It's a small, it's, a, it's not much bigger than this place. It's about the same size as the place that we're in right now. And Do you let Elizabeth Warren stay there for free? I, I, would, if she, <laughs> I, would, I would if she asked. You know. It's only polite. So... And it has great acoustics. It has a great sound system. We go up there and dance, and it's beautiful. I have like dance. Uh, yeah, we go up there and dance, and we have these like I have laser light show up oh there, which God. is real fun. And Do you know how many women just right now? <laughs> the idea that this like like erudite, good looking guy. You got the George Hamilton tan. I don't know how a Canadian gets a tan like that. Oh, I guess you're here in California. <laughs> hey man, okay. insta tan. Wow, like to to know that there's a guy in the world who is like that with somebody he's been with for thirty years. That is the ultimate for women i mean oh my seriously gosh. that wet and you gotta hide your kids hide your wife right hide your kids. i'm here to um koala lumpur i'm telling well, you Well, so that's a good move so so there's <laughs> a true. there's a place in la right? called uh trashy dot com trashy dot com trashy lingerie right? yeah yeah that's it okay so I had about, a, I had about a, I had a, a, a membership card in 1988 okay so you know the place well so <laughs> so about 20 years ago something like that i bought like 100 pieces of lingerie from whoa 100 like, yeah, yeah, yeah a whole bunch like a boatload yes what a baller yeah, yeah yeah it was and then and then she wore them and that took care of the novelty problem by the way the novelty oh really it helped a lot well yes. i mean it's the same and it was a form of play you know oh of course i mean let me tell you his you're mind is being blown right now yeah maintenance because i mean the idea that just different lingerie could because it's still the same person in there i mean that's my problem but 
you know, if, but you know that people can be very complicated, right? And and they, they can show you different sides of themselves. Also, you know? laundry. And if you can play well, <laughs> it can be very complicated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, fair enough. Fair but, enough. Um, but she played long, you know, and that made a big difference. Look, I envy mm. him. That is just. A, I, that he, is said, a, he said, "I envy you." I bet you all these red pillars at the end of the day really want what Jordan Peterson has. Absolutely. Married for 30 years, same woman. He said he has this real good gym here. I'm going to play you one less. One less rare, but you, I'll tell you, you do else. realize how rare you I'll are tell you something among else men, strange. Though, right? So I've known my wife since <clears> she was eight. So we've known each other for 52 years. Wow. And we were childhood friends. And I really liked her when, when we were kids. Like, I was probably in love with her. Before we you were even pubic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She lived across the street. She was one of my friends. And we kind of separated because I was young. Wow. I was a young kid in my class because I skipped a grade. And so she, you know, she physically matured like two years before me. And then she was gone for like four years, essentially. But we were very close friends when we were kids. And there was romantic attraction there at that age. And now when I see her, I swear this is true. When I see her, I can see her at every single age of her life. Ain't that good? It's beautiful. He said, I could, when I see her, I see her at every age of her life. That's gorgeous, man. At the same time. It's really magical. This is, uh, this is the beautiful part man, of covenant. Beautiful. This is the beautiful part of practice. This is the beautiful part of consistency. Yeah. This is the beautiful part of delaying gratification. This is the beautiful part about channeling your energy into the person you gave a covenant to. And, and hearing that exchange, I mean, it literally sounded like a grown man talking to a dude that's kind of stunted in his emotional relational development mm -hmm. you know someone that's like stuck in college years stuck in the red pills stuck in fresh and fit land mm -hmm. you know it's a trip man man and there's also a level of strength mm -hmm. and power mm -hmm. that a man has to be vulnerable enough to give himself to a woman yeah because you know a lot of times in society that's not celebrated, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And so it, it I, I think that Bill Maher has, that's that's his struggle. Yeah. The idea of yeah. giving himself that, that level of humility. Yeah. It takes, it takes humility, man. That's powerful. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And all of this, by the way, is it's no different than anything else. Like working on this aspect of your intimacy in a marriage, working on this aspect of your relationship, working on these things, it's no different than working and sculpting your body. Mm. It's no different than building a business. It's no different. And, and, and obviously it's different, but I'm talking about in terms of the key ingredients of uh, commitment and focus and planning and and being deliberate with. It's all the same muscle to do that kind of stuff. And I think people approach relationships with this, I would say, delusional notion that it's just going to happen organically. It's just we're going to have chemistry and it's just going to happen naturally. And if you're expecting chemistry to be what drives you, the reality is people can have chemistry with all kinds of different people. You know what I mean? You can have chemistry and emotions and all kinds of weird stuff happen, you know? Yeah. So that's why it's important to, 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 to reel it back in. That's why covenants and uh, vows are important. And so, um, yeah, I think, I, think it's, I think it's good. Hey, this is a segment from our daily after party stream. Consider partnering with us online for as little as $5 a month to get access to these daily after party streams completely unedited. You'll also get access to our podcast as they are streamed live into the community before anyone else gets to see them, get to interact with our guests, get access to our private Discord server, and a discount code for our store for as little as $5 a month. Ultimately, that will help towards helping us continue contextualizing the gospel using media and podcast here on YouTube. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.